Tis a dark and stormy night in the world of Minecraft. And howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to our Tech It 2 Let's Play Adventure Extravaganza of Awesomeness and Fun Times to be had in the wonderful world of Tech It 2, where I have some things I need to catch you folks up on, because I've actually been doing a little bit of work. So, first off, if we come over here, and in fact you could probably see this by looking at the map, so we'll go there. I came down here and I rounded these corners out to be the same. They were already rounded, but one was slightly different than the other, and I really wanted them to match, and now they do. In addition to that, I added another walkway right here and gave them the exact same treatment. Now, I'm noticing some parts of the walk walkway are darker than others, and I'm wondering if those are places where I neglected to put glowstone. But then again, it appears to be on tiles that wouldn't have glowstone in the first place. Those are marble tiles, so who can actually say what's going on? But it sounds like... Oh. It sounded like the storm was done. You'll notice we have some beautiful atmospheric sounds, and that's because we are now updated to 1.0.2. And I have Matmos back, and it all launched, and it's all working good. So we should have some beautiful melodic noises once more. Something else that I did was I experimented with roof lighting by using some of the... There we go. Oh, wow! It, it, even, tr it even tricks Wayla. Oh, no, it doesn't. Never mind. <laughs> I was just looking at the wrong block. I used some more of our reinforced framed blocks and glowstone on the roof here, but only on this one, because going in this direction, it doesn't quite work right. It doesn't get the texture right. It looks like the textures are going at odd angles, so I don't know what I'll do about that. This was my plan to fix monsters spawning on the roof, but since it didn't work, I just covered the roof and torches for right now. For right now! This is not a permanent thing. The other thing that I did between episodes was I filled in some grass around here. Not all the way over there, but uh, we also have more EMC now. I think I said last episode that we were going to get to a million, and I did. And if you want to see how I did it, I will go down into the mines, and I will show you. And while we do that, we're going to talk about... Well, that wasn't there when I did all of this last night. So that was last night that I did all of that. And this must have been built since. Um, These are glowstone torches from Galactic Craft. You have to have these on the moon, because there's no... No air. Mine under construction again. Again, you say. You need to leave me alone. Sign vandals will be, <laughs> will be prosecuted. Jeez. I wonder, wonder who that's a reference to. Port opening soon. What are you? What is? Is this part of the mod pack? Comment down below if this is happening in your world as well. Well, because we took down the lost sign, but it's being very persistent. Is this and is that over there also part of the mod pack? I have no idea. We're gonna do some things today, folks. I've got plans. I've actually got plans all the way up until episode ten, and I was going to do a board with the signs on it to explain what my plans were. But then I kind of decided not to because I didn't want to spoil it. But let me just say, the next five episodes, counting this one all the way up to ten, are going to be pretty pretty packed. And ten, I think, is going to have a surprise that a lot of you folks will not see coming. But uh, you might be wondering, how is this different than last time? Well, it is more open than the last time I showed you what it was like down here. Especially going in that direction quite a ways. And you can see on the map that there is... That's that's the above ground map. This button? A lot of, lot of, lot of crossing over and whatnot, so... I've, I've basically been sometimes following diamonds and then sometimes just clearing out massive swaths and uh, utilizing a bag, an alchemical bag. I wanted to call it a bag of holding. I mean, that's basically what it is. To carry boatloads of stuff to the surface and start automatically, well, not automatically, manually more or less processing it into ingots. The only automated part that we have set up so far is that it will automatically... Oh, I also tidied this up a little bit. This looked silly last time. So I tidy that up a bit. I think that gets you all caught up. I guess it is automated in that it's automatically pulling items out of there and dumping them into here. And that's, I mean, that's a stack of 11,000 and that's a stack of 3,000 each. So that's pretty decent. Dump it all in there for fat stacks. Look, we now have a 1.2 million EMC. Not too shabby. So let's talk more about plants. And it looks like the rain is just going to be with us for a while. And, and I'm okay with that. I bet if we, I bet if we slept, it would go away. I mean, it's going to be sunrise in 10 seconds, but... 
Oh yeah, there we go, we fixed it. <laughs> As I was saying, big, big plans, lots of things to do today. We're digging all this up! The reason I wanted all of this marked off by the wall is so that I can dig a massive quarry here, and then <laughs> I've got plans. I got plans for what we're gonna do down here. If you've ever seen the old Brashiat Cub Tekkit Classic series, you may remember a certain secret, maybe evil base. Well, let me just say to you folks, I've I've done a lot of thinking in my head about what I want to do here. But how to do it manually? No, of course not manually! We're building a quarry! And everything involved with that. Now, I want to get a lot done today. So we're going to start off with the basics. We're going to build the quarry. We're going to build the, the, the Sterling engine to power it. We're going to build the quarry fixer so if there's lava down there, instead of preventing the quarry from digging, it'll be removed. It'll no longer be an obstacle. Mwah. Another option to that would just be to put water around the outsides and it would turn into obsidian, but uh, I don't really want to do that all that badly. We got pretty much everything we need in here in order to get this up and running, except for landmarks. I realize I, I neglected to add those to the list. Now, I also want to build a battery using Zeta Industries' big battery. It's not necessary. You can run this directly off a of quarry and the... Or, I'm sorry. You can run the quarry directly off a of Sterling engine. I'm trying not to burp right now. I'm trying to hold it in, which is probably not healthy now that I think about it. I should probably... Give me a minute here. All right, there we go. I feel a little bit better. Probably a little bit healthier, too. I'm not going to have gases now, like leeching their way into my cells. That's, I don't think that's what happens. Anyway, battery, unnecessary. The more Sterling engines we hook up to this quarry, the faster this quarry will run. However, I like building big batteries. It could be fun. You know, even when the quarry is not running, the battery will be filling up. It's going to be a good time. We're all going to love it, so we might as well just go ahead and do it. And I guess if you're not familiar with the quarry or how it works, it is from a mod called Buildcraft, and it uses a different type of power. It does not use European uh, electrical units, the EUs. It uses RF, which stands for... What does it stand for? Redstone Flux. Yeah, I had to Google that. I used to know that. It's been so long since I've dabbled with it that it's sort of escaped my mind. But uh, fortunately, everything we need here, pretty much everything we need here, except for the pipe plug, has an EMC value, so that's going to be helpful. So I guess that that is what we're going to focus on today. Big battery, quarry, maybe some other stuff towards the end there. Maybe we'll have some other surprises. But this quarry is going to be amazing. Should I, should I explain what it is? I realize that there's a lot of people watching this. You know, original Tekkit was a decade ago. A lot of people might not have even been playing Minecraft back then. It's gonna it's just a big thing that mines for us. And the reason we would want that is so that we can have more EMC, more or less, right? Because we don't really need something that goes and digs iron when we can just come over here and get iron. But something that digs iron and converts it into EMC, ooh, hey, there's an idea. Let's go ahead and get a condenser out of that list of things that we're going to be building as well. And we already have one of those. We've built one. No, no, we don't. No, we built the alchemical chest. The condenser. Ooh, we're going to have fun with the condenser. Oh, there's so much about all of this that I am so excited for. This is quintessential classic tech it. Now, there are better ways to move items around than what I've currently got queued up here, which is our transportation pipes. But again, quintessential classic tech it. This is what we're going to start with. Maybe later on we'll update it. Now, for those of you who say things along the lines of, Reese, this is unnecessary. There are other ways to get EMC. You're right. And we're going to be covering that next episode. I'll go ahead and tease that. There's some intended and some unattended ways. Unattended? Uh, unintentional ways of generating EMC in this pack. As there were in Tekka Classic. And we're going to be testing those out. But today I wanted to do this because one, I need a giant hole dug anyway. And then also, again, it's classic Tekka. I want to do it. Let's go. So for the quarry, we will need a bunch of stuff. We will need iron, we will need gold, we will need diamonds, we will need redstone, we will need a diamond pickaxe, uh, but gears. Gears are something we're going to be building a lot of, and in order to get these gears, we've got to start off with the stone gear, that means we've got to start off with the wooden gear, which means we've got to start off with sticks, and these things do have EMC value, which is different 
it's definitely different. They didn't, back in my day, these items didn't have EMC value. They were from different mods, and you just put up with it. You just dealt with it. You, you made do. So we've got all of the items we're going to need here. I'm going to go ahead and move this and this in here, because they are already ready to go. Now we're going to build all of our gears, and we're going to do this fun little game of building it, going up there, dropping it in, building the next tier, because we're going to need more than just the one of these that we're getting. We're gonna need we're gonna need a number of them, but each one builds on the next. That's how you get your iron gear. I, I'm sure that there is a pattern emerging that you're all following at home. You're all thinking, yeah, I I don't need to see this in painstaking detail. I get the general idea. You're gonna surround that one with diamonds, right? Well, that is where you would be absolutely correct. And that'll get us our diamond gear. And then of the gears that we need, we need two gold, two diamond, and we also need an iron gear. And I think we need, was it four of those? Ooh, it might have been three. It was three. Get out of my inventory. I don't need you anymore. Now, I could put all those in there from memory because I definitely remember this recipe, but we'll go ahead and get the quarry. Now, the quarry does not have an EMC value, which I kind of prefer it this way because this way you have to manually manufacture them, in my opinion. And maybe some of you will disagree. And that is completely fine. But in my opinion, everything having EMC makes the game a little bit boring. Because at that point, like, oh, I've made my first rocket. Now I'll make a thousand more. It's like, no, you need to have to work for some things. You know what I mean? So this is going to be the landmark. And this is how we're going to define the size of our quarry. We will need three of those. Which, you, they go at each corner. And you might think, well, surely you'll need four. But no, you don't, I assure you. Let me go ahead and show you how we set up this quarry before we do anything else. So, by default, you don't actually have to use landmarks. We can throw down our quarry, and we got to figure out how we're going to do this. I guess we're going to set up the quarry to dig out the biggest portion. So, from here forward. And it doesn't have to be centered up. You can place it anywhere. I mean, let's say we place it right, right here. That's exactly where I wanted it. By default, it has this little bitty shape. Which is fine. By the way, these are not industrial craft. They're build crafts. So you can just break them with a pickaxe or a diamond drill. We want to make it bigger, though, so we're going to use our landmarks. Now, there is one trick with the landmarks, and that's that they all have to be at the same height. So, we'll plop that one there. Place one here. And then we're going to need one over here, and there's not enough dirt, I can already tell. So, we're going to collect some more. And how is it already sunset again? Boop. So, we can plop that one down. And now we go into the corner... The common corner, we right click on it, and we have this giant red outline. So we want to go ahead and have a good look over this and make sure that it is exactly what we want. And it is not. I don't know how I managed to do this. I want it to fill in this entire section here. Why did I leave a gap? That's all right. We can just break these and uh, we'll put them back down. All right. I've redone them, but using my brain this time. And yes, that's exactly the shape we want to get dug out. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to come back and trim some of this manually, but that's okay. We can do that. So with that made, we want to get our quarry, and we want to set our quarry down up against, but not inside of, the red line. And it will automatically claim that space. I'm going to collect all of our landmarks. Now we need to power it, and before we do that, we actually need to build some pipes. Because once this thing is turned on, and it starts running, it's going to start spitting objects out the top, and if they don't have anywhere to go, it's going to be real messy real quick. So over here, I have two pipes ready to go, gold and diamond. Now, back in Tech at Classic, gold worked by applying a redstone signal to it, and it would make your objects travel faster. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think gold pipes are just faster by themselves, no power required, but we'll find out. And the alternative to that would be to use either the stone or the cobblestone pipes. So those are both very straightforward. Piece of glass in the middle, either cobblestone or stone to either side. Stone and cobblestone are the same speed, but if you have a gold pipe to accelerate items, when they pass through a cobblestone one, they will slow down more quickly than if they were going through stone. So if you're limited on resources, I would recommend building stone pipes, and those can be found right here. So just glass in the middle, Stone to either side, good to go. Interestingly, stone pipes don't have an EMC value, and I would assume that is because it would break the game. Each one of these items is only one EMC, and if you get eight pipes out of that, 
the minimum EMC you can assign them is one. So you'd very easily be able to break the game by just making a bunch of these, turning them into EMC, making a bunch more. I understand that. We're going with gold because we want them to be fast. I, I don't care about material costs. We can cover it. Each one of these is going to be, well, uh, 512 apiece or 4,000 and 96 for eight of them, which is I mean, basically we can get 16 of them for the cost of a diamond. And then we also have a diamond transport pipe. And this one is important because it allows you to do sorting, which we're going to want to do because some of our items will be going into a chest where they will be stored. Some other ones will be converted automatically into EMC. Could set up a whole system that automatically brings the ores inside and macerates them. And we might actually do that. I said it like we wouldn't but we might actually do that. There is also a teleportation pipe that exists that allows you to teleport items through time and space. Well, just through space, not necessarily through time. However, I couldn't find it, but someone in my live stream, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who said this, but I was live streaming this in another world the other day, and they mentioned that you could still build them. So before we build any pipes, I want to test that. So I believe that the recipe for a teleportation pipe is two diamond gears and glass. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab a stack of glass. I'm also going to grab some gold. That is a golden chest. We don't need that. I'm going to grab some gold so we can make some golden pipes. And I'm also going to grab some diamonds to make the sorting pipes. We're going to give this a shot. I'm not saying this is going to work. I'm not even sure if this would be the correct recipe anymore. It doesn't look like it. As I remember it, it was two diamond gears to either side of a piece of glass, and that would give you a teleportation. Now, again, I might be misremembering. It's also possible that that was the right recipe, and they've just been removed from the pack for being a little bit too OP. In any case, I thought it was worth a shot, and I'm glad that we tried it and can confirm. Now, I got enough gold to build a bunch of pipes, because I forgot that the gold ones do have an EMC value, as do the diamond ones. So we can get rid of all this, we can get rid of our landmarks, and we can get a few more of these golden pipes. We don't really need that many, but then also, we definitely don't need this many diamond ones. I'm going to hold on to maybe three of them, get rid of that egg, get rid of that gold. Now, in terms of chests, I actually want two of them. I want one alchemical chest to store items in, and then I need another one for a recipe. This is for building the energy condenser. And this is what I was talking about. This is going to be what automatically condenses items that have an EMC value into raw EMC. Although we will have to turn them into a different type of item. I'll show you what I mean when we build it. But to build it, we will need to get some more diamonds out. So I didn't really need to put all those back in here. We will also need... It looked like it was obsidian, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll get a few of those. And we will build this very expensive chest. Now... The base of it is the alchemical chest, and it helps if you put the items in the correct orders. There we go. How am I going to demo this? Let's go ahead and get some diamonds. Uh, just one will do, and then we'll get some gold, because gold's a pretty high value item, so we'll get 64 of those. And when we plop this sucker down, it looks kind of like an alchemical chest. In fact, we can throw down our alchemical chest, and you'll see... It has the same number of slots in it, or actually, maybe a bit less. I can't tell because it's being offset. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah, a bit less. But the way that it works is we set an item up here. So you just hold it up there and left click, and you get to keep your item. And that is the target item. Then, as we add items into the chest, it converts them into EMC, and the goal is to fill this up and get a diamond. So we know that four goes into a diamond get ourselves a diamond. So you can see how this will work with a quarry. We will pipe items into it, and if they have an EMC value, they will contribute towards making a diamond or whatever we put up there. We can actually make it uh, generate anything. We could have it generate dark matter if we wanted to. But that is the energy condenser. Before, back in the days of Tech at Classic, the transmutation table didn't have a sorting, or didn't have a search bar. So it was actually kind of useless, and you, most people would use an energy condenser and then just keep one of every item handy, and then they would just leave all their EMC in here, make what they needed as they needed it. It was chaotic. It wasn't great. So we want to set this up to have one chest. We'll put our alchemical chest right here. That is a diamond pipe and not what I meant to put down. Uh, alchemical chest there, and then we will have our energy condenser. Ooh. Actually, if we're going to be moving items around... 
it might be better to have the alchemical chest, the storage chest, over here instead if we end up getting rid of it anyway and having items go... Well, that's interesting. Wait a minute. Okay, when I put that down, that appears. I wonder if that means it's going to automatically put items into those chests. Because that's not necessarily what we want to do. What we want to do is have items come out the top. Now, usually you'd want to use a wooden pipe up here. Because a wooden pipe is an extraction pipe. But the quarry should automatically pump items out of the top. So, in fact, if we wanted to, we could go straight into our diamond transport pipe. And then from there, have it go to shift-click and shift-click. There we go. So now if you right-click on the diamond pipe, you will see all of these filters. And this is how we're going to determine what goes where. So see that yellow? Let's say we mine up some dirt, which we definitely will. But we want the yellow to go into the energy condenser and start creating something. I, I don't know. Swift Wolf's Rending Gale? That's pretty expensive. That might be a bit much. Eternalis Fuel. That's actually a perfect one to pick because I think that's what we're going to be running the quarry on in the first place. So... If the quarry is, you know, able to generate its own fuel, that would be fantastic. Meanwhile, we would want ores and things that don't have an EMC value to come out of the green. And then, like I say, we could pipe all of this into the house and have it automatically go... I mean, we could have it either go into the chest or into the hopper. If there's an idea. Maybe we'll do that. But let's get this thing up and running first. I'm still curious to see whether or not those little holes in the side of the quarry means it's going to try to automatically pipe items into the chests instead of spitting them out the top. Which, I mean, that sounds ideal, but it's actually not the behavior that I want it to exhibit. So, we're going to build a Sterling engine now. This is not the most basic engine. A wooden engine is the most basic. But Sterling is pretty good for running a quarry. There are other types of engine, if we look them up here real quick. So, from this mod, we also have the combustion engine, which runs on fuel. Back in the day, you could run into problems with these blowing up if you weren't paying attention to them. I don't know if that still happens anymore. I think that's probably been altered. But we have to go find fuel. Uh, you'd want to process that into... Because it comes as raw oil, you want to turn it into, into fuel inside of a refiner. It's a whole process. Forestry adds things like the peat-fired engine, the biogas engine the clockwork engine, and the electrical engine. Now, the electrical engine converts EU into RF, which would be cool and helpful if we had a ton of EU, like if we had a nuclear reactor running, which is a thing that I have planned to do in the near future. Hint, hint, maybe keep your eye on this one here. The recipe is not all that complicated. In fact, we're going to go ahead and save it. There used to be a mod called Thermal Expansion. I don't know if it still exists anymore. It must. It was such a cool mod. And it added these dynamos that you could use. So you could have like a steam dynamo and a lava dynamo. Lots of really cool things. But this is Tech It 2. It's a Tech It Classic en Enthusiasts mod. You know, it's a throwback to the old days. So we're going to be sticking with our engines. And we're going to go ahead up here and remove some of these things that we've already built. There we go. So we can have a better idea of where we are in all this. This is so simple. Even though it doesn't have an EMC value... Everything in here does. We're going to want to build a number of these, so I'm going to get a little bit silly and just grab stacks of these items. You don't have to do this. So let's get that recipe pulled in there, and we will make... Oh, actually, if we put it all inside of here, it'll automatically pull them in as we go, and they do stack. So let's say we make six of them. That's a good place to start, and we'll leave the materials in there in case I want to get more. And then I said we would use Aeternalis fuel, but let's start with coal, and if we spell it correctly... Gosh! If we spell it correctly, there it is. We're going to stack out. You do need to turn these on. So you can do that with redstone torches. You can do that with uh, levers. I clicked the wrong button yet again. I'm really bad at this. I've never built a lever. Or a lever, if you're so inclined. Well, then we will get a stick. And we will get a cobblestone. We will amend this situation immediately. Lever. Now, we could use one of these and use either redstone to power all the engines up and power them all down at the same time. Or, there should be redstone wire in this pack. Oh yeah, there we go. What do y'all say? Y'all want to do that? All it requires is a bit of redstone around an iron ingot, and then you can do all these other fun colors. Hi! Are you having a good time? He's so confused. He wants to come in here and eat my face, but he can't work out how to do it. Bless his heart. Okay, well, good luck with you, 
right, good luck to you on that front, sir. I, I encourage you to, to maybe stop. So that has an EMC value. So we can get some more of those. We can just get a stack of those. And then we need to go cook them up to get the proper red alloy ingot. Now those do not have an EMC value, which is why I'm making a stack of them. It'll be nice to have some later on. How are we doing on juice? Oh, we're full. We're ready to go. Oh, oh, I guess I, I haven't shown you this either. I did get all this set up and going again, built a new macerator after the last one blew up. We are using hoppers for input so that we have enough room for everything inside of here. And uh, we're using the cheapest big chests that we can get, the alchemical chests, because they are cheaper to operate than some of the other alternatives. And apparently blast proof based on that test that we did that one time. So three of those on top of each other will create red alloy wire, which works kind of like redstone, except it can do, yeah, it can do things like go up walls, do, do like little bins. I don't know if there's a way to prevent it from connecting together like that. I have to assume that there is. I wonder if insulating the wires would do that. I bet different colors wouldn't connect together. Okay, that could be helpful if we want to put all of our engines next to each other, but still have these connect up. Now, the reason we would want them not to touch each other is if we want to put all of our engines bundled up really close, I'm assuming that trying to connect the wires... Yeah. Well... I was going to say, maybe even if it doesn't touch, it might still work. You know what? Let's take a nap and then we'll find out whether or not it's necessary in the morning. Okay, it's the next day and I had a, an epiphany, if you will, while I was sleeping. I realized that we had neglected something very important, which is how to get power from our engines into the quarry. Because you could very easily just hook these up directly to the quarry. You can even run one through the other by just putting them all together in a chain. But I think you lose some efficiency that way. There is another way, though. If we look up pipes yet again, we will find that there is such a thing as a uh, kinesis pipe. These carry the redstone flux, and different ones carry different amounts at different speeds. I'm going to say let's go ahead and build the gold ones, because we've already got gold pipes in our inventory. And then getting redstone is basically child's play at this point. Check us out. And for some reason, we're building two of them, even though, yet again, they have an EMC value. So we're going to want to get quite a few of these. It could be necessary. I'm not saying that it is, but it could be necessary that we might need a wooden kinesis pipe in order to actually extract power out of our engines. Oh, interesting. Look at that. Work in progress. The above uh, limit isn't enforced. Does that mean that 1,280 redstone flux per second, if it's not enforced in the golden one, is it then also not enforced on the stone one? Could we save bokoodles of cash? Or, I guess, you know, EMC is the currency of the world. By using a stone ones instead and not really lose out on anything? There's only one way for us to find out here, folks. There's only one possible way for us to learn the answer, and that's to just try it. As I was saying, though, we might need wooden ones in order to extract power from the engines, so we, we might want to go ahead and just build some of those in advance just to be sure we've got them. The recipe is super basic. It's just wooden glass. It might not be necessary, you know, add a bit of redstone, but if we need them, it'll be nice to have them. Now, with all of that talk out of the way, let's get these hooked up and see whether or not they're going to work. I'm going to steal a little bit of dirt from over here, and use that to fill in all of these holes over yonder, or right here. And then, let's see, we're going to have to hook up power to it, I guess maybe from the bottom? That could work. I feel like I've been very disjointed and unclear for most of this episode, and I'd like to apologize for that. I'm doing the best I can here, folks. So we'll patch all that up. That looks fantastic. We're going to put our engines over here. Ooh, actually, they need to have at least one side open where I can get the redstone to them. We'll do four there, and then we'll do two here, and we can run our redstone wire down the middle with our lever there. Hold down shift, and we can place these. Ooh, they are not connecting up. That's not looking promising. That is why I said we might need these wooden kinesis pipes. They hook up the way I would expect them to. We'll hook all of these together, and then we can actually save on stone pipes by running them down the middle. 
and we will have them connect up right there. Now this connecting probably won't cause a problem, but there is a way to fix it using a pipe plug, which requires that we just get cobblestone to either side, gravel in the middle, that'll give us a structure pipe, which you can use for just free building if you want to, and then a structure pipe will give us four pipe plugs. My only issue with these is that they are horrendously ugly, and, and I hate them, but we've got 32 of them now, and we're going to make good use of them. They work in regular pipes, kinesis pipes, liquid pipes, any, any kind of pipe. So we're going to plop it right there. That's going to plug it off. Okay, so now we're going to put a bit of fuel in all of these. We're going to do just basically a test run. And for that, I only want a couple of the motors running. So let's see if this works. Perfect. So it doesn't actually have to go into the motor. This might have worked with redstone as well. Could be worth testing, I guess. Some of you probably heard the sound start up as soon as I switched it. And if you're not familiar with the mod, you're thinking, wait a minute. You're leaving in the middle of the action. Go back. <laughs> Don't worry. I am. I am. That is the sound of the quarry preparing the space. It's putting down these quarry frame blocks. And this goes a lot faster when you have more power. But I want to test this. We're going to turn that off. And we're going to break these cables. And we're going to put down redstone instead. Wow. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That one's not working. So this one's running solely off the fact that the lever is going. The redstone is not running the, the other motor because, of course, it won't. That's not how redstone works. Redstone has to be plugged directly in. So point one to these really cool cables. That'll power both of our motors. And I hate the fact that they're not in sync anymore. So let's fix that. I'm trying to get in here and pick up that piece of redstone. There we go. And then we will go around and we will power up the rest of these. And you will see what a tremendous difference it makes to the speed of this when you have multiple different engines running. And gosh, look at all that energy flowing through there. See, I was concerned that we would be generating too much energy for stone pipes. But if the limits aren't being enforced, then who cares? And yeah, that's moving along quite a bit more quickly. Not, not as fast as it could be going. Oh, chicken, you want to get out of there. If that chicken doesn't make it out, that chicken's going to be at the bottom of this quarry when all's said and done. Y'all y'all remember that chicken. So there we go. The quarry has started mining, and I don't see... Oh, there they go. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah, it is not automatically exporting to these chests, which is good. So we want to start getting things that have an EMC value. Uh, the torches. <laughs> we might not worry about that because we have a limited number of items we can put in here. But uh, seeds and torches, we want to be automatically dropped into here so that it can produce Aeternalis fuel. Now, you don't have to pick Aeternalis fuel the way that I did. It just has the same value as a diamond, so for me, it's basically the same. And like I said, we are going to start powering these off of Aeternalis fuel because it's going to burn for a really long time. I don't have to worry about them stopping when I'm not paying attention. Now, you don't have to stand here and baby this the way that I am to make sure that every single item gets sorted where it needs to go. Uh, you could... You just have everything you expect to be mined up in your inventory, set it right from the beginning. I don't know what all we're going to find. I mean, of course we're going to find dirt. We'll probably find things like cobblestone as well as it goes along. So it's going to go through and it's going to do all of this one layer at a time, slowly digging its way down. Now, eventually, like I said, we are going to run out of sorting in here. So what would we do in that situation? Well, in that situation, we would throw a plug right there. And actually, let me just set it up and demonstrate. So what I would do is I would have this go up one. I'd have another diamond sorting pipe up top. There we go. And then I would plug this off. So now everything that isn't sorted into yellow will automatically go up to the next one. And then we will have a, another golden pipe hooked up right there. Not right now. Not yet. Because I don't have anything that I can tell it to sort through. Feather. Perfect. So in this one, we want to have another golden pipe. And we want the feather to go through yellow. So, now everything that is sorted through yellow goes down there. Oh gosh, that's not what I wanted to have happen. Oh shoot. Okay, this happens sometimes. I know how to fix this. Wait, what? How? How? No. I put lighting in the floors. It should be impossible for anything to spawn inside of there. Unless the floor lighting doesn't work. 
Yeah, F7's on. And there's nothing... What? Well, this is concerning. Hey, fellas! Come outside! Come and get me! Come on! So there are a number of things I didn't show you with Swift Wolf's Rending Gale, like what happens when you right-click it. It repels mobs away from you. So if you're holding it in your hand and you have it right-clicked, that happens. You can also put it into your shield slot, and you can switch between them by hitting F like that. So then you could have out your sword, but that's not really going to do us any good because they can't get near me. Something else you can do, and I don't know if this works. Yeah, you can press Y to do that. But what is that actually doing? Get that back here so I can fly again. And then if we fly up and we hit Y... Oh! That's what that does. So look at the enemy, press Y... Did I do that? Oh! Oh! I'm just pressing Y still. What? Sometimes it makes lightning come out of the sky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've still got it turned on. Like I say, that's right click. I just wanted to get in here and deal with these guys without them blowing up. You know what I mean? I don't want to lightning strike my house though is the only issue. How did you guys get in here in the first place? Come on out. This is a good way to lure them out because it's going to keep them far enough away from me. Like, they're aggro, and they should be coming out the door towards me. But they won't actually be able to get super close. Hello, oh guys, come on. Okay, what if I turn it off? Come on, fellas. Come on. What, 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 what are you wielding right now? Can I, can I force them out the door if I do this properly? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, out you go, out you go. There you go. Okay, that's you dealt with. And then just one I think I can manage. So let me turn my ring off. And then, come here, you. Yeah, okay, two quick hits. This thing recharges way faster than I give it credit for. What was I even doing before I got distracted with that? Oh, the quarry's still going wrong! Iron! We want iron! We need iron. We need to put that to either side, a piece of glass... And that'll give us the iron transport pipe. And the iron transport pipe can be configured... Does it... What? The iron transport pipe... Oh, jeez. We need a wrench as well, I think. This is the build craft wrench. It requires three iron and a stone gear. Okay. There's our wrench. This is not at all how I anticipated this episode going. It's been a total disaster. We need to get to bed. And then we need to get out there and fix this. All right. Don't have time to deal with any of you right now. Get out of my way, shoe. Shoo. Off the wall with you. Off the wall with all of you. You! Come here, you. Look, we can fly along and just shove him off the edge. Okay, it's like taking out the trash. Let me keep this on while we're down here so nothing sneaks up on us. Right! Iron transport pipe prevents items from going in a direction you don't want them to. So, we will... We will... Is this, is this it? This is the iron transport pipe? Shift right, click it on there. Okay. And now we want to use that wrench that we had earlier to there we go so do you see that little thing there so that will allow items to pass through it in one direction but not go back the other way so you saw how like the dirt and stuff goes up there and then it realizes it can't go but if we had something like so we got a lot of cobblestone going in there if we configured this diamond pipe up here to say cobblestone goes through yellow co cobblestone goes through yellow you gotta left click it in there I was trying to right click it it would be able to pass through that solid line. So that very complicated and convoluted mess that I just manufactured is how one might go about making sure that, wait, what? What? That is dirt. Dirt is supposed to be sorted inside of here, thank you. How is dirt getting up here in the first place? Dirt should not ever be going up there. And if it does, it should be stopped by the iron pipe. Maybe we need to put an iron pipe down here as well. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to break that one. We're going to, as quick as we can, find our iron transport pipes. Uh, shift, click, plop, and then we got to configure this to be a particular way. Okay. There we go. So, <laughs> items should now not go up there, which means that this iron pipe is kind of useless. It'll allow it through here, allow it through here, but it won't allow it to go backwards, so it looks like everything's going the way it's supposed to. 
I don't know why dirt was coming up here at any point. It really shouldn't be. Unless maybe something was getting confused inside of there. I wonder... It must have been just coming back through. And we had a gold pipe here before. It must have just been going back through and then bypassing the sorting and then going into there. That's nuts. That shouldn't be happening. We can replace this one now, though, with a golden one. That should alleviate that issue. So once more, to hopefully explain everything in a way that is as clear as I think that I can. Quarry, diamond pipe, diamond sorts things into yellow. Anything that isn't sorted into yellow, because it's not also occupied any of these filters, goes straight up to the next one, where we have another chance to sort items. So we, we're going to get rid of the dirt there. We're going to get rid of feathers. We're not going to have any more feathers. And actually, we're going to go ahead and grab some cobblestone if we can. And we're going to add that to the bottom filter so it doesn't have to travel all the way up to the top. We'll add that in there. I don't reckon we're going to be getting any more torches or flowers. Uh, if we do, I can manually filter those out. But th th those aren't things that need to be permanently filtered anyway. So the only reason you'd need the second one is if you run out of space on the yellow one. You could also have the pipe come out the front here and even off the back so if you didn't want to do two diamond pipes you could just have uh i would recommend iron pipes coming out of either side and that would give you access to one of these others to choose from so all of these are still running off of the meager coal that i put in them before this one is still running off of that Aider Nalus fuel and it's been going for a while so that's actually what we're going to put in the rest of these and in case you were wondering if you've never done the math on it uh we can go ahead and have a look at coal Remember, coal goes into an alchemical coal. And just in case you folks have never done the math on it, remember, an alchemical coal is worth four coal, which means that a Mobius fuel is worth four alchemical coal, which means it's worth 16 coal. And then you can keep going from there. What is 16 times four? That's going to be 64. Well, I made all of that a lot more complicated than it needed to be. What with the creepers inside the house and then trying to get the sorting pipes working correctly. I feel like maybe in terms of a tutorial, it wasn't the best, but hopefully you folks followed along and you understand. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. But yeah, these are good for sorting. These are good for moving items quickly. These are good for making sure items don't go backwards into your pipes. And uh, kinesis pipes, got to extract it with the wooden ones. Engines, alloy wire. I'm going to go I'm gonna go eat a slice of pizza. And, and then we'll come back to do the battery. Well, folks, my recording session yesterday was supposed to go for about an hour and a half to two hours, cover the quarry, cover the battery, call it there. It ended up running for over four hours, and in that time, I got so distracted immediately after what you just watched, the quarry, that I forgot everything else I was going to do. I completely forgot about building the quarry fixer, as well as automating the quarry. And then by the time I remembered, many hours had already passed. So when I sat down to edit the video, I realized that it was just too long to cram into a single video. And I was kind of disappointed with the outcome because we never really got to those things that I just discussed, the quarry fixer or, or automation. So I'm recording this as an append, what is it called, an appendices <laughs> at the end of the episode. A, a post-credits scene, if you will. An epilogue of sorts. So, there's more that you've not seen yet. The next video you will see, your future will be my past. That's why I'm not turning around. I don't want to spoil the next episode. I don't want you to see what's behind me. I don't want you to be able to logic out how my descent into madness took place. Because trust me, there was a descent into madness. Instead... We're going to focus on what is directly in front of us, and I'm going to be showing you folks real quick, just to kind of cap off this episode specifically about the quarry, I'm going to be showing you the quarry fixer, how to build it, what you might need it for, as well as how to do some really basic automation, which hopefully, yeah, we've got some ores in here now, and we can configure that up. So the first thing I want to do is show you how one might use the uh, quarry fixer, and to do that, I'm going to dig a hole here. And I'm going to put down a bucket of lava. And then we will see what happens when the quarry reaches this bucket of lava. It's going to take a little bit of time. Oh, I kind of hoped it would spread out a bit more than that. I suppose if I wanted it to spread out a bit more, I could put a block here. And it should spread to the sides back there. Perfect. And then I think if I break this one, it'll come back out again. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, that's beautiful. It would be so funny if we found sulfur just in the quarry walls. Oh, you don't know about that, though. You don't know about that, either. Just do a little bit of mining while we wait on the quarry to get around, you know? Kind of help it out a bit on the items it missed. So here's the moment we've all been waiting for. What happens when it reaches the lava? As you can see, it just goes around it, which is not great, especially if you dig down into a lake of lava. Now, in the old days, your method to fix this was to get a bucket of water, maybe several of them, and put them around the corners of your quarry, which did work and was quite effective. It also had the benefit of turning the lava, at least the source blocks, into obsidian, which you could then mine up. So that was always pretty useful. The problem with that method is that calculating all of that water from a few source blocks spreading out across so much territory tends to take up a lot of system resources. Now, computers are a lot more powerful these days than they were in 2010, but still, it's not an ideal solution. You might want to just get rid of that lava, get rid of that water flow, and just have a clean hole that it can travel down. And that is what the quarry fixer is for. The recipe for the quarry fixer is really basic. You need a Minecraft dispenser, and you got a couple of different crafting options for that. And then you need to combine it with four iron gears, and that'll get you the quarry fixer. You'll need a button to go along with it. And the cool thing about the quarry fixer is that it's a single use item. You don't have to keep it out here. And I wonder if you actually need the button. You might be able to just right click it. But you set it up next to your quarry, you right click, and the job is done. It got rid of the lava. If you have lava that is coming in from the outside, it'll dam it off. Now, where is the lava, though? What happened to it? Well, if we dig back here, it's still back there. All the quarry fixer did was create a dam of stone to keep it from flowing in. Now, if the lava source block were inside of the quarry, it would simply get removed. So I've kind of broken the quarry again, but fortunately, we still have it set up, so we can just right click does its little calculation, and as you can see, it is walled off again. And we're done with the quarry fixer. We can collect it with our pick or pick-like item and use it on the next quarry. Again, putting water in the corners or all along, or actually just mining in the ocean. That is also an option. One that we may or may not be utilizing in the future. But with that out of the way, it's time for me to demonstrate how you might set up a really basic and really simple automation. And I'm going to need a bit more material for this. Well, I've got 50 cobblestone, so no, I won't. I'm going to build an ugly little extension over here. Perfect. That's just temporary. And I've already manufactured some additional machines for this. So there are better versions of the macerator and the furnace that you might want to use. But for today, we're keeping things really basic. Now, in the future, I do intend to have a more permanent setup like this one. But for the sake of this video, we're going to go super basic. I'm going to throw my generator right down there. On top of it, I'm going to have my electric furnace, and then next to that, connected with a cable, I'll have my macerator. Now, for this demonstration, I'm using an alchemical chest and a hopper. And the reason I'm setting it up like this, that's a hole, is because I do not want the pipes to go directly into the macerator. Buildcraft pipes are not very smart, and if the inventory they are targeting is full, it will not care. It'll send the items anyway. They'll pop all over the floor. It'll be a huge mess. That is why I want to have this chest up here to act as a bit of a buffer. And then I'll have my hopper feed items down into my macerator. I do have an export upgrade, which we want to go to the west. So we're going to right click, not shift right click, but right click. So it'll send items to the west. And I'll set that up there. I'll go ahead and fire up my generator with some coal. And then we want to configure all of this to start working immediately. So we already have some samplings in here of what it is mining up. So we want it to send silver, we want it to send iron, copper. The first thing I need to do is figure out what this top is going to be. So shift right click, and that's going to be white. So inside of the white, we want to put our silver, our iron, our copper, our aluminum, uh, eventually, things like gold, whatever else we might want to get. Oh, gosh. Okay, we're now in a race. So I'm going to pipe that into this chest here. And you'll notice they start going much faster once they get into the gold pipes. I don't know if y'all caught that, but they zoom in. So what's going to happen now is they will drop into our macerator. And you can, of course, add whatever upgrades you want to to your macerator. But because we have our export upgrade set to pump items to the west... As soon as they are done inside of the macerator, 
they will automatically be shipped over to our generator. Now, I neglected to get an additional export upgrade for the generator, but as you can imagine, you just get an export upgrade, put another chest next to the generator. Why am I talking about it? Let's just do it. So I am back and I got another, in this case, basic export upgrade, which is super simple to build, either using this re recipe here or using the base upgrades, which I need to make more of. They've been really useful. I've also got an alchemical chest because I find that those tend to be a little bit more expensive than a diamond, but you're getting a lot of storage space, which is going to be helpful. So if we right click on this, it'll send items to the north, or I'm sorry, to the east. I got my orientation set up wrong, but we actually want them to come back towards us. So we'll shift right click and that'll say west. And then we will plop down our alchemical chest to the west, put this in there. And of course it'll only, oh, oh, interesting. You might remember before they would only import and export items that were recently finished. Oh my gosh, I wonder if that means it's been patched. If it has been patched, then that means that the basic export upgrade now may work properly inside of a macerator. So let's add some iron. And remember before, if we had the basic export upgrade, it would only export a single item out of the, the output here. So you'd get two iron ore, it would export just one of them. Let's see what happens now. Now that we're on 1.0.2, does it work properly? Yes! Well, everyone, good news. You no longer have to use an export upgrade. A basic one will work fine. I've already got this one, so, you know, there we go. And that is everything that I had hoped to cover in today's episode. Again, there's three more hours of content from my last recording session that will make up the next episode, episode seven. And that is going to involve a descent into madness and chaos. So I hope you folks are looking forward to it. I don't want to spoil what's behind me. So you'll just have to wait till next time. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.